Thank you for staying with us. Ed Tech in Nigerian schools. You know, Nigeria is a developing country with a sector known as education sector, right? Just to be clear. <laughs> And, well, it just, so happens, mm, it just so happens that our budgetary allocation is, as of today, 6.7%, a standard percentage for any year, which is below uh, average of the estimated allocation for education by UNESCO, United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. That percentage is 27%. Now, education technology is a combined use of computer hardware, software, educational theory and practice, and so many other things. Now, education in Nigeria will be better off, as many believe, if every school integrates technology into its core curriculum. How well does Nigeria's educational system maximize such a trend as this. Let's dive into this uh, conversation on the state of EdTech in Nigeria with Ayola Nihilola, who is VP of Content Development at ULESSON. Thanks for joining us this morning, Mr. Nihilola. Ayolua, my apologies. Ayolua Nihilola, my apologies. My producer's name is Ayola, so maybe that is where the mix up came from. Thanks for joining us this morning. No problem. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, first of all, help us understand what we're talking about uh, when we talk about education technology in our country. It sounds like something we all know, but just to be sure that we know it. You know, sometimes you think you know the lyrics of a song until you see the lyrics. So help us understand exactly what we are talking about here in terms of education technology. Okay, um, good morning again, and thank you for having me. Um, so, educational technology, or edtech, as it's popularly um, called, um, it's just um, uh, the way that we've been able to infuse technology into our curriculum and educational system. Uh, so, there are a lot of uh, problems with the current system that we would know. Um, you can look at it from three uh, major uh, perspectives. So, we can look at it from um, accessibility, uh, quality and relevance. These are some of the problems that the current education system um, is having. So, um, edtech is now how are we able to use technology to uh, how are we able to deploy technology to solve some of these problems? And that can come in different variations or in any variation that it might come in. Uh, once you're able to infuse some technology into your curriculum or education system, that is edtech at, at the very basics of, of it. But the, uh, speak to us about the takeoff of it. Uh, how is it re received? Exactly. You know, le let's begin from there. First, from the perspective of the of this uh, of the parents, and then the students. How is it received at that level? Sorry, can you come again with the question? I lost my audio for some moment. Okay, I'm talking about the reception of technology. How is the technology received? by the students and by the parents uh, at okay. places where, you know, it's been uh, tested? Oh, thank you. Um, so, yeah, um, it's been very well received. Um, thank you. Thanks again to the COVID, um, COVID events that happened. Uh, I think that kind of accelerated the, um, the way it has been received by the general public. Um, so I think generally um, pre-COVID, uh, I think parents were skeptical about uh, the kids using phones and tablets to learn. Uh, would they truly be learning on this? Uh, we have social media platforms, we have YouTube and the likes on the same um, devices. Um, how will the students be able to learn on such devices? But I think um, COVID events kind of helped um, change that perception a little bit. It now became obvious um, that uh, students can do more on these devices than just watch or play games and the likes uh, of things like that. So I think um, COVID really helped change that perception. And post COVID now, I think parents are beginning to also understand that, oh, um, actually learning on these devices uh, can again be even more effective than what uh, we get in, uh, in, in schools. And I will give uh, an example um, to this, uh, or, or, or to kind of help with the, with, with the point. Uh, so when we look at our current education system, 
uh, we'll find that uh, in, in, a, in a class, we have about um, roughly, let's say, um, 20, 40 um, students in, in one class. And when the teacher comes in um, to deliver the lesson, they address everyone in the classroom. Um, so but for, but, but it happens that some students are, are not able to fully understand the lessons um, taught in the particular class. But there's nothing the teacher can do. Um, it's one of the frustrations with teaching in general. You can't um, go one after the other to, uh, to try to solve each student's uh, problem. You move on to the next class. Uh, that's the logical way, that's the way the school system is structured. But what EdTech does now, and what parents have begun to, begin to realize is, even outside the four walls of this classroom, students are able to continue or even better learn some of the concepts taught in, in schools. So I think the reception has been re really good. Um, the outcome have been, has been evident that um, ed tech, infusing ed tech into the current education system kind of make it more, more effective. Um, so that's, I think it has been well, well received. I know what you have looked at uh, the reception by the students and reception by the parents. What about the yeah. teachers? Have you had to train these teachers so that they can impart the knowledge uh, that they want to through technology? Yeah, thank you. Very good question. Uh, so I think the teachers also, um, when uh, we began introducing um, EdTech or technology into classrooms and schools, um, there was an initial fear that uh, this might replace um, the role of a teacher. But that is not the case, and that's not what we've seen. Um, just in the case of um, when technology is infused in any industry, uh, it's the same thing we are seeing in, in the education sector also. It only becomes like an effective, effective tool in the hands of the teacher. And they are beginning to also realize that. For example, a product like ULESSING, uh, we've been getting a lot of requests uh, from schools on how they've been able to use this tool even in classroom to introduce, uh, to introduce some concept, to dive a little bit into, uh, into this. Um, so you lesson as a product itself, uh, what we present is a more visual perspective or a visual uh, a resource uh, for education. So things that are like nervous system, for example, that can be very theoretical or you can see just in your textbook from a very flat and 2D perspective. But when you find a product like you lesson where you can see this thing in three, in three dimensions, you can see it in a more realistic way. It helps the student understand better. So the teachers also begin to realize um, and use these um, resources as a tool in their classroom. Uh, so before a teacher will start uh, a lesson, for example, uh, you can play a couple of videos from the U lesson app, and the student will understand better before you then go into your, into your lesson. So I think the reception uh, it has been better and it's even becoming more effective uh, because the teachers are seeing that um, having uh, tools like this kind of make their learning and outcome more effective as well. Clearly, on that basis, uh, we understand that um, you've been able, you lesson has succeeded in closing more than 150 partnership, uh, partnerships with schools, yeah. including the high-end ones as well. So how did you lesson persuade teachers? Because, I mean, you spoke to that fear. A good number of teachers themselves yeah. probably grew up with the very local should I call it local iPad, you know, the one that they use white chalk as the stylus. Yes. Um, that's the one that they grew up with and the rest of them, Alero, don't look at me like that. So you how were you able, yes, Slate, how were you <laughs> able to persuade uh, the teachers? What was the, what was the selling point to the teachers? Because some of them are digital um, migrants and not digital natives like the students that they will be teaching. Okay. So um, the way we've been able to persuade the teachers um, is from two perspectives. Um, one, um, it's from the learner's angle. So learners themselves, uh, because initially when we launched your lesson, it was a B2C product. Basically, that means it was a product developed just for the learners. Um, so you find learners going to schools and showing the teachers that, oh, I have this tool like I use at home. It is helping me improve uh, in, in my learning. Uh, can you have a look at this and let me know what you think? So that way, the, uh, the teachers are beginning to discover, OK, um, can I have a look at this? Um, and they, they are able to see how effective it has been. But the other way is also because um, the teachers are beginning to see that you lesson solve a problem. Um, learning at its core is supposed to be personalized. Uh, and the, the teachers are beginning to realize they are not able 
um, to provide this personalized learning at the core of it. So a tool like you let's say, is highly recommended to students by the, even the teachers themselves because they know it solves this problem for them. And they don't need to do much. You don't need to uh, be the one teaching or writing. Your role here is just to guide the student on how to use the app, on what to watch on, on the app. Uh, you don't have to be the one teaching or writing on the tablet or, or, or any, any of those things. Uh, so that is one level. There are some schools also that have been able to really deeply incorporate this into their learning material. So you find a school that has a projector uh, or TV in, in all their classrooms. Um, so what they do is to play some of these videos to the students um, before the lesson or during the lesson at some point, and that is able to also help them um, just learn better. So for, for the teachers, I think what is driving the adoption for them is because they, they've seen how effective it can be and how it can be like uh, a tool to further help them get better outcome um, for the students. Because at the core of it, uh, what the teachers and what the school is looking for is for the student to be able to get better outcomes and pass their exams. So I think anything that kind of helps um, that to be more effective, it will be embraced uh, by, by the school and, and the teachers. And you lesson is definitely providing that. So it's making our job easy. Uh, as we go. Okay. Um, we keep hearing more and more about ULESSON, which tells us mm -hmm. that there is a growing acceptability for it. Am I correct? Yes, you are. Right. So what has been the impact of the introduction of ULESSON on the outcomes of the performance of students? Okay, Th thank you so much. Um, so the impact um, for us has been at different, uh, different levels. Um, again, like I said, uh, we have um, thousands of users um, that use the ULESSON app. Currently, we have about um, 3 million downloads on our app and over 30,000 um, monthly subscribers uh, that pay um, to, to access the premium feature on the app. Um, and what we've done, um, to kind of measure this impact is that, uh, so you listen, for example, is not just an app where you can watch videos or um, just come quickly to do something. What we've done is to also create a very strong analysis uh, engine into the app. So we have a learning analysis that measures, oh, I've watched X number of videos today, and at the end of every video, um, what we do is to ask students a short quiz. Um, so let's say we have um, 10 five-minute video for you to understand um, chemical e equations, for example. At the end of each video, we'll ask you a quick question. Do you understand this? Do you understand this? If you're able to pass those um, questions or quizzes, you proceed to the next videos. If you don't, you go back again to watch the video till you're able to move to the next video. But at each, each, each point of all of this, we've been able to put in place proper uh, uh, learning uh, a tracking system. So at the end of um, the week, for example, we send a report to the, to, the, to the parents for them to be able to understand the activities of the, uh, of the child on the app and also to help them understand how well they are progressing. Hmm. Generally, um, also even in schools, we've seen that where um, students are struggling, um, they've been able to, and when you introduce a product like you lesson to those schools, they kind of move from um, the bottom percentile to the top, uh, to the top or middle, to middle class. So, so far, um, it's been kind of effective, but we're able to look at that effectiveness um, from a per user uh, point, and I think it's, it's been effective so far from the feedback we, we've gotten. There are a lot of tons of testimony that we get on a daily basis of um, students giving us uh, feedback on how it's changed their lives, how they've been able to, uh, when they were struggling in biology, for example, and now it's become more clearer, much, much, much clearer to, to them. So I think the impact has been very visible um, to us. P pardon me asking, um, which schools can you name? Which um, okay. results, for instance, have uh, improved and have become impressive because they have now yeah. uh, keyed into the U lesson um, system? Thank you. So I'll give an example of um, Preston International Schools in, uh, in Akure. Uh, so Preston is a very, um, very important school to us because um, I think they even further uh, took this um, very, uh, very seriously, um, how they've been able to infuse it. So I, I will explain what they've done in this school and impacts that they saw also. Um, so what Preston did um, was to uh, purchase a lot of viewless um, tablets uh, for their schools. So they have a computer room 
where they put all of these devices where students can go during the break hours um, to watch um, U uh, ULSM videos on their tablets. But what they, they've done for that to kind of help um, uh, make the impact more visible is that um, in the school, they usually have about um, uh, a, bo a bottom percentile of students. So I think it was 20 in this particular class. So what they've done is they put this student away from the actual curriculum uh, or the method of teaching of the classroom, and they put them exclusively to only use the ULSN product. So that means every, every time the students come to school every day, they don't go to the classroom. What they, what they do is to go to the computer um, um, room to just watch the ULSN videos. And that is easy decision for them because the ULSN videos also mirrors uh, everything they will be learning in the classroom. But what they've seen at, at the end of um, that experiment was that about 60% of these 20 students that exclusively just watching ULSN videos every day are able to move from the bottom percentile and even done better than the ones going to the class um, every day to, to learn. I think that was one of the very good schools that have been able to um, infuse ULSN uh, into their schools and they've been able to see like, a proper outcome. So Preston International School in Accra as one of those schools and several other schools in, uh, across the country as well. After all, children like to watch TV anyway, so why not just give yes. them a load of it in academics? <laughs> uh, but one the, question the, exactly. comes to me, uh, we have little time to go, uh, Ms. Anilola, is that of access. There are a, a load of people right now who will do anything they can to get these devices and to get their devices and put, you know, you lesson on the devices for their children. So on the one hand is that of access, and I understand it's a subscription-based system, right? Please take us through yeah. uh, how people um, acquire it and sustain its use. Okay, thank you. So you listen to the subscription-based um, product, like I, I, I mentioned. Um, so and what that means is um, for you to access the premium um, uh, uh, content we have on the app. Um, even or let me start from this. Uh, although it's subscription-based. There are things on the app that students can do for free. Um, so because you are not paying, does not mean the app is useless to you. Uh, you can access um, past questions, for example, and even the videos that we offer for free, there are some segments that we we'll give to you every day for free to watch. It only becomes subscription when you, you want to have access to the entire uh, platform itself. And at that point, you're about to make that decision. Um, the subscriptions are in different um, variations. Uh, so you can make subscriptions for three months, um, six months, or you can go further uh, to make the subscription for a year or two. But even more importantly, what we've also seen is for us to introduce devices. So we have now a custom-made device solely made by ULSN. This is not like a Techno or Samsung. Um, this is a custom-made device in-house that we think is very good for, for students. And why that is important is because on this device, for example, we've been able to impute parental controls. Okay. Uh, so when you have this device, when you purchase it for your kids, uh, they can't just do anything. They can't just go on Instagram. Okay. Exclusively for, In fact, you, um, you, you solved the problem um, right so, there. You solved the problem right there yes. because the fear of many parents yeah. is if I give my child this device, the next thing is where I, w I don't want him or her to go. Yeah. Well, I guess, you know, just a quick one. Uh, is there a website that people can get information about your lesson now? Yes, um, it's that's www.ulesson.com. So okay. That is U Lesson, um, letter U Lesson.com. www.ulesson.com. And I'm assuming that is one word. Well, we have to thank you very yes, much. One word. Yes, Ayola Nilola is VP of Content Development at U Lesson. Thank you again for your time. Thank Ayolua you so Nilola. <laughs> <sighs> no thank problem. you again for your time. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Oh, God. Well, Sunrise is back in a moment. Please stay with us.